Dear viewers, Welcome back to our end-to-end -end demo of the autonomous driving functionality development. In this series, we are demonstrating the entire AD software development cycle, from customers' requirements to the approval for release in the target vehicle. We cover different aspects, from the design of the self-driving feature to its verification and validation in the vehicle. We also describe the challenges encountered on the journey to the software-defined vehicle. The audience we are addressing with this series are predominantly technical people, but also managers working in the area of autonomous driving. Most topics covered in this series are also applicable to other vehicle domains or any software developed for the software-defined vehicle. In this session, we will introduce fuzzing and demonstrate how you can use it at a very early stage in your project to increase the resilience of your software to cyber attacks. Let's have a look at the agenda in more detail. After a general introduction that aims to achieve a mutual understanding of the scope, we will show a technical demo on a concrete example using fuzzing on one of the software components we developed within our end-to-end -end demo. After the demo, we will summarize how Luxoft can support you to establish fuzzing in your project to make your product more resilient and therefore also less vulnerable to cyber attacks. We will add sections to the video, in case you are not interested in the technical demo, you can simply skip it and directly jump to the Luxoft offer after the introduction. Before we jump into the topic, let's look at the areas of the underground map that I will be covering today. If you are not familiar with this map, you will find a more detailed explanation in the introduction session, linked below. Looking at the map, we will address fuzzing in this video, which is part of the software testing and will contribute to your meet your cybersecurity requirements and help make your software more resilient to cyber attacks. Now let's move on to get a mutual understanding what fuzzing is. So, what is fuzzing about and how does it differ from current software testing approaches, or in other words, why is traditional software testing not enough? In traditional testing approaches, the focus is typically on the expected behavior and maybe testing boundaries of certain data types. Looking at a software component under test in traditional testing, we typically use certain values according to the specification as input and verify the output of the software under test to evaluate if it works as designed. And since these tests are based on the requirements and on the expected behavior of the software component, we typically cover input values we would consider as relevant to test. For example, if we have an interface that expects integer values in the range of 1 to 100, we set up some test cases covering the boundaries, in our case 1 and 100 and a value in between and calculate and verify the expected output for these exact values to verify the software under test. Fuzzing is about testing unexpected behavior using random data, not about random actions or tests. What happens if we inject unexpected randomized data, like for example ASCII art or emojis to the software under test? But also, what happens if we inject unexpected values to an interface being able to use a large amount of random data of the defined variable type? As opposite to the traditional testing approach, we also do not expect a certain output we need to verify. We simply monitor the software under test until it crashes, throws an exception, or enters an infinite loop. As soon as this happens, we can use the generated test data to analyze and fix the bug. The advantage of this method is, you can do this at any stage of your software development process, even if your software is already developed and in production. However, ideally you do it at very early stage in your product development process when you start implementing the software to meet the product requirements. You will not need the hardware at this point. An additional advantage is, you will not need to have a lot of knowledge about the application, you mainly need to understand the interfaces where you start injecting data. Fuzzing is not intended to prove the expected functionality of your software product. This you will need to verify with traditional testing approaches. Fuzzing is a method to make your software more resilient and help protecting it against cyber attacks. But it is not a cybersecurity silver bullet that will make your product invulnerable to cyber attacks. There is a lot more you need to do in the product development and verification process to address cybersecurity threats. There exist hundreds of fuzzing frameworks. Based on their awareness of the program structure, they can be roughly grouped into black box, gray box, and white box fuzzers. As a rule, the more you know about the program under test, the easier it is for you to break it. 
Black box fuzzers only know the external interface of the program, but not of its internal structure. The benefit is clear, they can test anything. The drawback is that being in the dark, they will unlikely find errors hidden deep in the software, because their randomized inputs will often be discarded by its upper layers. Gray box fuzzers are the middle ground. They rely on instrumentation of the code and track code coverage as they feed new data into the software. They are relatively easy to integrate, but are less efficient than white box fuzzers in terms of finding all possible behaviors. White box fuzzers analyze source code, build a formal specification of the software and perform symbolic execution, obtaining a list of constraints for each execution branch. By solving those constraints, they generate a list of test cases, fully informed of which data leads to which code branch. This approach exposes bugs hidden deep in the program, but the time needed for such analysis can become prohibitive. We will now demonstrate how to use fuzzing to detect and fix a bug in one of our software components. First, we will introduce the software component ACC Motion Planner. Then, we will use libfuzzer, a gray box fuzzer, to find a bug in the software. Then we will analyze and fix the bug. And finally, we will use libfuzzer to confirm that the bug is resolved. Let us have a look at the motion planning component, which is a part of the adaptive cruise control driving function. The component receives the current ego vehicle speed, speed of the forward vehicle and the distance to it, as well as desired speed of the driver and calculates the target speed required to maintain the safe distance and comfort acceleration. It is configured with a set of parameters and then executed periodically with updated data. Let us look at the ACC Motion Planning Implementation class. As we can see, it has a public constructor which accepts configuration parameters. The function get target speed will be called periodically to calculate the target speed for the motion controller based on current speed of the eco car, information of the forward vehicle and the maximum allowed speed. Because its C++ interface only accepts numeric data and will not compile otherwise, we won't be able to feed it with ASCII art or emojis. But fear not, we will still be able to break it. You may be surprised how devious fuzzers are at generating even numeric data. Fuzzing frameworks are not aware of our component's interface. They produce data in form of byte arrays. We need to create a fuzzing target in order to feed the binary data into the motion planning component. We start by defining a data structure corresponding to the inputs of the motion planning component. The structure will contain the configuration parameters of the motion planning component. We model multiple invocations of the function, get target speed, to discover any hidden bugs dependent on the state of the software component. We also implement a function that would create the structure from an array of bytes. In order to receive data from the fuzzer, we need to implement a function with a particular signature. The name LLVM fuzzer test one input is required by libfuzzer, but it is also supported by other fuzzing frameworks such as AFL and HongFuzz. We do not need to define a main function, because it will be provided by libfuzzer. Having received an array of bytes from the fuzzer, we convert it into the structure. We initialize the motion planning component using the configuration parameters. Then we we call the periodic function with its inputs from the struct, potentially multiple times. Fuzzers generate a lot of randomized data. Most of the generated data will not lead to discovery of new behaviors of the software under test. Whenever a test data leads to discovery of a new code path, the fuzzer stores it in a dataset called fuzzer corpus. This way it would not need to start from scratch after being interrupted. To help the fuzzer find relevant data faster, it is recommended to seed the fuzz corpus with initial data. As the motion planning component does not have its own file format, we can write a small program to serialize several sample data structures on disk to serve as a fuzzing corpus seed. We create several instances of the fuzz data structure with different number of invocations of the periodic function. Then we convert those structures to bytes and write them to files. Fuzzer will discover those files and use them to seed the data corpus. Graybox fuzzers, such as libfuzzer, are based on code coverage. They monitor the software under test and keep track on execution paths they discover. 
This requires adding certain compiler and linker flags to the build file. Because code instrumentation incurs a significant performance penalty, we need to create a separate build configuration to perform fuzzing. Fuzzing detects crashes, but bugs don't always manifest themselves as an immediate termination of the program. Sometimes errors will be subtle and show themselves only after a long time. To expose the bugs sooner, we use sanitizers. They add an extra monitoring layer to the software under test and terminate the program as soon as they detect suspicious behavior. It is recommended to combine fuzzing with multiple sanitizers to detect as many bugs as possible. Now let us build our software component along with the fuzz target and corpus seed generator. Because we have just started our fuzzing journey and the fuzz corpus is empty, we run our corpus seed generator to provide the fuzzer with initial data. We run the fuzz target with the corpus directory containing the initial seed data. The fuzzer takes these data and starts modifying it to discover new code paths. It produces the message new whenever it discovers that a modification of data has resulted in an execution of a new code path. It stores the relevant data in the corpus so that it does not have to start from scratch next time. The fuzzer will continue to generate test data aiming to discover new code paths until the application crashes. The fuzzer conveniently stores the data that caused the crash in a file for easy reproduction. Looks like we are trying to convert a negative invalid value to the unsigned long integer type. The behavior is not specified by the C++ standard, so it is unpredictable how the application will behave in a car. It is better we analyze and fix the bug. Looking at the code we can see that the conversion from seconds to nanoseconds goes out of the representable range if the execution period parameter is initialized with an implausible value. Such a situation is possible when invalid configuration gets deployed to the car, for example, after a failed over-the-air update. As a result, the behavior of the motion planning component becomes unpredictable. The timestamps it produces can be jumping back and forth chaotically, impossible to rely on and causing all kinds of problems. As the timestamp increment is derived from the configuration parameter, we need to ensure that the execution period parameter is plausible. We apply principles of defensive programming and make a plausibility check of input parameters. For instance, we can define the sensible range for the execution period. Of course, we have to ensure that our software requirements are satisfied. Subsequently, we can add a check whether the value is within that range and set the execution period to its default value otherwise. Having applied the fix, we now rebuild the software component and the fuzz target. Let us retest the fix. We run the fuzz target providing the previously saved crash data as an input. In this mode, the fuzzer does not perform any fuzzing, but only calls the fuzz target once. As we can see, there is no error output this time, so the bug is fixed. Now we can resume the fuzzing process by feeding more randomized data into the motion planning component. The fuzzer tries to discover new paths in the code and to optimize the corpus by finding smaller datasets that would open the same code paths. The process can go on for a long time. Fuzzing is never actually complete. The longer you run the fuzzer, the higher the chances to discover new issues. Did we draw your interest to fuzzing? Do you want to establish this within your project or company? Luxoft can help building up a fuzz testing environment in your project or company and support you with integration to your automated software testing pipeline. We also can run, maintain, and continuously improve the service for you. Since we also are specialized on delivering embedded automotive software, we can help you fixing bugs identified within fuzzing tests. In this video, we gave an introduction to fuzz testing as an approach to improve resilience of the software. If you like the video, press the like button. We always appreciate your feedback. Leave a comment below or use the contact form to get in touch. To get notified of new videos, press the subscribe button. Thank you for watching. We are looking forward to meeting you in the upcoming videos.